Worshippers, I appreciate the honor. In this series, Pastor, that we're, we're going to be talking about the miracles of Jesus. I want to begin it today by looking at John chapter 5. The Bible says that there was a pool in Jerusalem called Bethsaida and there were five porches and people would come there who were sick with all kinds of diseases and an angel would come at a, at a, a different season and trouble the water. And the first one that stepped down in the water after the angel had troubled it was made whole. But the Bible says there was a man there who was there at the pool for 38 years, sick. And every time the angel would trouble the water, he would try to jump in, but he was not able to. Somebody else would step in before him. This was a man who was defeated. He was a man depressed and discouraged and frustrated and disappointed. Because he was at the right place, but somehow he never seemed to make it at the right time. How many people today, they're always a day late and a dollar short? How many people in our lives, we are so close but yet so far? We are right there. We know something is about to happen. But we are always seem to be struggling on the outside. But I want to let you know today that it's possible until Jesus show up. So my, the title of my message today is Until Jesus Comes. No matter what you're going through today, I promise you that God, as, the moment Jesus show up, everything is going to change in your life. Come on, is there anybody know what I'm talking about? You can be in the worst situation, but the moment God comes, every devil got to move out of the way. Every devil got to go. Every bondage is going to be broken because where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. And the Bible says, whosoever the Son therefore shall make free, he shall be free indeed. He was a man lying at the pool, and Jesus comes to him. And Jesus said to him, do you want to be made whole? You see, there are a lot of people that are sick, but they don't really want to be made whole. And they love the attention they get from being sick. But my friend, if you want to be made whole... God is able and ready to set you free today in the name of Jesus. You see, I don't know about you, but I know what it is to be weak, and I know what it is to be strong, and it's much better being strong. I know what it is to be sick, and I know what it is to be healed. I know what it is to be bound, and I know what it is to be set free. And being set free is better than any bondage in your life. Come on, hallelujah. I don't have to wait. I don't have to be a recoverer. I can be a delivered person in the name of Jesus. I can be set free in a moment. God's got the power to do it. As I, know, I don't know if you know it, but God's got the power to set you free right now, right where you are. You can be set free even hearing my voice today. But hear what the Bible says. Jesus came to him and Jesus said, do you want to be made whole? And the man said to him, sir... I have no man. When the water is troubled to put me in, Jesus didn't say to him, do you have a man? He didn't say to him, do you have anybody to help you? He didn't say to him, do you have a friend, a family? Do you have somebody around you? He was literally saying to him, I am here now. It don't matter what happened before, but I am here right now. Today is a day when God God has showed up in your life to take care of every situation that you are facing. You see, it could happen. 
All the other things could have happened in your life. And the disappointments could have brought more disappointment and more hurt. People who you thought would help you did not. People who you looked at did not do it. People who you thought would have come through for you, they let you down. But I came today to tell you that he will never fail you. Come on, I said he will never fail you. He will never disappoint you. That's what David said. I was young and now I'm old. I have never seen the righteous forsaken nor his sheep begging bread. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. You cannot trust God and be, be ashamed. He that put their trust in the Lord shall never be put to shame. Daniel wasn't put to shame in the lion's den. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego was not put to shame in the fiery furnace and I promise you he will deliver you can you raise your hand and say yes Lord but the Bible said Jesus came and the man had to do something when God show up you got to do something hear what the word says the Bible says when Jesus came he stood up next to the man and Jesus knew he was there for a long time but the man had to look up. Look up with anticipation. You see, when you want a miracle from God, you got to look to him. You see, when you were in your situation, all you could see is where you are. All you could see is what happened in the past. All you could see is the present predicament you are in. But when God show up, you know what he wants you to do? He wants you to look away from where you are right now. Come on, hallelujah. He don't want you to look at where you've been. He don't want you to look at the situations that are going on. He wants you to lift up your eyes to him because he is is able to make a way for me where it seemed to be no way. David said, I will lift up my eyes onto the hills. From whence cometh my help? My help comes from the Lord. But you see, all the devil want you to do is see where you are right now. All he want you to do is focus on what is going on right now. My disappointments, my hurts. He want you to reminisce all the things that have been going on. He want you to relive the hurts that you have experienced. And the disappointments. He want you to relive and rehash what is going on right now in your life. But God is saying, don't even worry with that now lift up your eyes to me look to me the man had to look up in anticipation and the second thing he had to do is listen up with fervent be ability to literally hear what God is saying to him listen with rapt attention and Jesus look at the man and Jesus said to the man he said rise up and the third thing the man had to do is get up from where he was at that in that place there's so many people who are living in their depressions, living in the situations of their lives. But Jesus is going to always tell you to do what you think you can't do. He's always going to ask you to do what the enemy say you can't do. There was a man with a withered hand and Jesus told him, stretch forth your hand. Now Jesus is looking at the man and he is saying to the man, rise up. The man could have said, I've been here 38 years. I never was able to get up. But my friend, if God said, get up, you can get up. Come on, I said, if God say you can do it, you can do it. I don't care what anybody else say in your life. I believe that when God is ready to deliver you, he is going to make a way for you that the devil can't change. Come on, say yes. You see, when God said get up, all he wanted to do is make an effort. All he wanted to do is rise up. And I promise you that when you're ready to rise up, every impossible situation is going to change in your life. He came to Peter. Peter was in prison. His feet was in stocks. 
there were chains on his hand. <laughs> and the Bible says that the angel came and smote Peter on his side. And the angel said to Peter, rise up. And the Bible says, as he rose up, the chains fell off his hands. I came to tell somebody today, them chains the devil put on you, them bondages he brought in your life is going to fall off of you the moment you begin to rise up. The moment you begin to do the impossible, and the devil said, can be done. You want to show him today how you can do it. Come on, somebody. You want to show him today that what is impossible with men is possible with God. If God say, rise up, I'm rising up, somebody. I'm going to rise up from where I was. I'm going to rise up from my discouragements. I'm going to rise up from my frustrations. I'm going to rise up from all the disappointments of my past. In the times I came so close, but it didn't happen. In the times I came right there within my grass, and every devil rose up to block me and stop me. I'm forgetting all of that. And today I'm going to rise up. Jesus said to the man, rise up. Tell somebody you got to rise up. You got to get up from where you are. Come on, somebody. You got to do what you were not willing to do. You got to shout sometimes when you don't feel like shouting. You got to raise your hands when the worship is going on. You may not feel like it, but how many know you got to offer to God sometimes in a sacrifice of praise? At times you may not feel it, At times they don't come easy. At times you just got to step out by faith. Jesus said to the man, do you want to be made whole? The second thing he said was rise up. Here is a man trying to rise up. These legs was never able to carry me. My body was not strong. I am in a difficult situation. But because you said to rise, I'm going to rise up. Hear what Jesus said. The fourth thing he said to him, he he said, don't only rise up. He said, pick up your bed. You know, because if you rise up and leave the bed there, that thing is able to drag you back down where you were. That situation can talk to you. Those problems can speak even in your dreams. And the devil tried to bring you back where you were. But I want you to know we are not going back where we were. Come on somebody, journey. We are not going back where we were. <laughs> we are advancing to what God has ordained for us. There is no weapon. Tell somebody, no weapon. Formed against me shall prosper. I am not going back where I was. I am rising up. I am going forward. Hallelujah. I am not turning back. God told the children of Israel when they came to the Red Sea. And the mountains beside them. And Pharaoh army coming against them. Hear what God told them. He said move forward. Forward in the sea, forward in the impossible situation. I mean, look at what God is saying to him, pick up your bed. He is saying to him, he said, I want you to don't leave it where it is. I want you to take control of the same thing that control you. I want you to literally grab the thing that grabbed you for 38 years and show him who is boss. Hallelujah. Come on, I want you to let the devil know, hallelujah, you thought you had me, but you don't have me. I am delivered in the name of Jesus. Come on, hallelujah. You got to talk to drugs. You got to talk to the bondage. And you got to let the devil know you thought you had me for the rest of my life. But look at who I am. I belong to Jesus. Hallelujah. I'm going to take authority over you because I got power in the name of Jesus. Come on. Hallelujah. I've got authority in the name of Jesus. 
I have been delivered by the blood of the lamb. I am not bound anymore. I am free. Come on, I can sing amazing grace. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Once was blind, but now I see. Pick up your bed. Come on, tell somebody, you got to pick up your bed. You see, if you don't pick up your bed, your bed is going to try to get you and lure you back. It's going to try to bring you in that same situation. It let you try to tell you it wasn't real. You weren't delivered. You weren't delivered. It was just an emotional thing. But when you pick it up, you are saying to it, hey, I am greater than you. You had me for 38 years, but now I got you. Hallelujah. You had your hand on my throat, but now mine is on your neck. Hallelujah. You had me a captive, but now I am victorious. I used to be a victim, but now I am victorious. Oh, I wish you would believe what I say to you today. I wish if you would literally believe that you got to take charge of the same things that had you bound. You got to take charge of it. Oh, same depression. The devil come and say, you were not delivered. You got to open your mouth and speak like Jesus and say, I am delivered. And if Christ has set me free, and I am free indeed. The devil come and say, you are not healed. What are you going to do? Cry and say, oh, no. No, you got to open your mouth and say, I am healed. For by his stripes, I am healed. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. And the devil come and whisper in your ears that you would never make it. You got to tell me, tell him, he that began a good work in me is able to perform it until the day of Jesus. Jesus never start what he don't finish. The mere idea he started is because he already finished it. You see what God does is when he saves you, he shows you your future and then he back you up and tell you there is where you are going. Hallelujah. And the Bible says very, very clearly, those whom he foreknew, them he also predestinate to be confirmed to the image of his son and those whom he predestinate them he called and those whom he called them he justified and those who he justified them he glorified he she God him predestinate you now he predestinate you billions of years ago even before he made the angels you were on his mind hallelujah and he had a destiny for you. It is for me to believe what he had for me. And lay hold upon it. Hear what Jesus said to him. Rise up. And then he says, take up. Come and tell somebody, you got to take it up. Take up what hold you back. You got to take control of what the devil did in your life. You got to let the devil know you will be sorry for what you did in my life. Because you thought you had me. But look at what God has done in my life now. Hallelujah. Oh, blessed be the name of Jesus. The same people that used to put you down is the same ones that's going to have to respect you. What God is going to do in your life. Like Joseph, the same hands that cast you in the pit is the same hands that are going to have to come and bow down before you. Come on, hallelujah. Jesus said to him, rise up. He says, pick up thy bed. And then he said, walk. He said, don't stay here. If you stay by this pool, this pool represents defeat and sickness and bondage and death. Don't stay here. Go somewhere else. Go up to the temple. You see, if you dwell too close to your past, it's going to inevitably drag you back there. I don't know about you, but God is not just a God of the past. He is the same yesterday. 
Come on, say it with me. He is the same yesterday. He is the same today. And he is the same in the future. I don't know about you, but I don't want to stay where I was. I want to go where God is taking me. I don't want to live where I used to be. There's so many people talking about what used to be. There's so many churches, all they do is talk about what happened in the past. Azusa Street and all the great things of the past. But in journey, we are not talking about the past. We are hungry for what God wants to do right now. We are ready for what he wants to do now. Praise God for what he did in the past. But God's got something better. You see, God don't regress. He only progress. The part of the just shines brighter. Come on, tell somebody. It shines brighter and brighter onto a perfect day. Not dimmer and dimmer, but brighter and brighter. If all you did was live in the past and stay there, you would eventually go back to where you were. How many of you know we are getting up? Hallelujah. As a church, we are rising up. As a church, we are advancing. As a church, we are believing. We are going. Going after what God has in store for us. We don't know about anybody else. We are not in competition with no other church. But we know what God wants us to do. Come and tell somebody, I know what he wants me to do. And he wants me to advance. He wants me to rise up. He wants me to go up to the temple. The Bible says, when the man began to go up with his bed on his back. The religious people came and said, how is it you are fetching your bed? And today is the Sabbath. There is always going to be religious people trying to talk you out. You shout too much. You're making too much noise. Why you got to pray all the time? Why you got to do this? Why you got to do that? Man, let me tell you something. When you're after God, you don't have time to give to what nobody else say. Come on, hallelujah. You can say what you want to say, but I know in whom I have believed, and I am persuaded that he is able to keep what I've committed unto him. The Bible says the next time the Lord Jesus met the man, he was in the temple. The man didn't take his salvation and deliverance to go any other place, but he went into the house of God. I tell you, when you have been delivered, the time has come to pursue God. I prophesy to you that there is coming a move of God and it's already started in our midst. And as a church, we will behold the glory of God in this place. Hallelujah. And we will experience his glory and his power. God is going to meet us in the temple. And God said to him, Jesus said to the man, he says, go, he said, don't sin anymore. Let a worse thing come upon you. You see, when you're pursuing God's presence and his word, there is no room for any other thing in your life. The only thing that matters is to do his will. To pursue his purpose, to go after his glory, to live in passionate pursuance of the presence and the glory of God. Hallelujah. I say to you today, church, the time has come for you to look away from every other thing. Hear what he is saying. Rise up from that situation that you have been in and constantly buffeted and irritated your soul. Rise up and let the devil know I can't be bound no more. And then pick it up. Let the devil take control of what controlled you. And rise up and let's move into his glory. Let's rise in his presence. Let's pursue his glory. Let's go into the house of God and worship God the way you have never worshipped before. I want you to sing the way you have never sang before. I want you to shout the way you have never shouted before. Because this revival that God will give us will be different than any other place we are not going to be a model for nobody else it will be the glory of God in our midst and whatever God desires to do 
whatever he wants, whatever is his will, whatever he desires to do, we are going to go in his presence and stay in his presence. Jesus came and met the man. He met him by the pool in defeat. But now he is meeting him in the temple in victory. Oh, glory be to God. He not only going to meet you when you're down. He's going to meet you when you are moving in the glory. Hallelujah. When you rise up, you're going to always have room to go higher. Come on, tell somebody. No matter what God did, there is room for more. Tell them there is room for more. He met him in the low place. And now he's meeting him. In the high place, there is a relationship. Today, that's what he desires for us. Let the worshipers come. Let the worshipers come.